So today I'm going to talk to you um, about in simple terms what is marketing. It's a series of uh, small lectures I've been giving on this, such as branding, <clears throat> and today we're going to cover lecturing, uh, uh, marketing. It's only about 15 minutes, it's just going to cover the basics. So today we're going to be looking at what is marketing? So that's the research that uh, defines the objectives, that leads to the plan, that leads to actions that you then review. It's also very closely linked to advertising. And advertising is the marketing tools deployed in order to meet the objectives of the marketing plan. Now we're going to cover that in a second lecture. So today we're just looking at what is marketing. And it's been around for a very long time. This, for example, is a bronze plate for printing and advertising uh, for the Lu family sh uh, needle shop in Xi'an, Song Dynasty, China. So it's been around for absolutely forever. So, marketing is the process of interesting potential customers and clients in your products and so services. The key word in this marketing definition is process. Marketing involves research, promoting, selling, and distributions of your products or services. It's that research. And that's the thing that I really want to get across. Marketing is all about research and putting a plan together and understanding some of the key elements of that is what I'm going to try and give you today. <clears throat> Given the centrality of uh, customer needs and wants in marketing, a rich understanding of these concepts is essential. So what sort of concepts are we talking about? First off, we're talking about needs. What are needs? Well, needs are something that people need to live. It could be as simple as food, it could be water. So it may well be cover any sort of products that are in within needs, such as, for example, we talk about food, such as supermarkets, that sort of thing. Then we move on to wants. Wants is something slightly different. Wants are something we desire. So for an example would be that yes, food we need, but we want to buy a luxury item, a luxury watch, for example, when a, you know, a, a normal watch would tell the time, but we want to spend more money. A want, it's aspiration, something we actually desire. <clears throat> and then demands. The demands is really interesting. Demands is all about the fact that you now have the money to actually satisfy those needs and wants. Now, demand would be the case that we live in a society where, say, a, super, a certain group of people have excess cash. We may be in a society where a certain age group uh, have an excess of cash, allowing them to not just meet basic needs, but also satisfy a lot of the wants. And that's it's putting your products within and your services within these that really answers the marketing plan. So let's just talk about some of the terms you'll hear with marketing. B2B marketing, what is this? What is B2B marketing? Well, that's business to business. What does that actually mean? Well, it might be, for example, producers. It might be something uh, as a toy company that buys plastic from a supplier. That's a B2B. It might be something as simple as um, a hair salon. A hair salon has to buy colors and products to actually service its own clients. It will buy these off of another company. The hair salon also may well be marketed to by other businesses such as um, BT, for example, over or another telephone provider or internet services. Anything that is B2B, you've got resellers, for example. They're people that are buying products off of somebody to resell. So for example, you may well buy products um, from a uh, distributor in China to actually sell in the UK. Uh, governments actually are also do an awful lot of B2B, where they're actually buying off of different suppliers to meet demand. And then we have B2C. Now that's the one most small companies find themselves dealing with, or they think they do. This is the client. This is literally business to client. Let's go back to that hair salon. That hair salon's really kind of nice and easy because you can just turn around and say, well, actually, okay, it's really simple. I have clients come in, they're paying me direct, and that's business to client, easy. But always remember, as I say, that you're gonna have some of that B2B marketing as well. You're gonna be marketed to by other people. Within all of this, we talk about something called the four P's, and it's essential that you actually understand these. First one we're going to talk about is the product, the product itself. And you say, well, okay, what is the product? Well, whatever it is <clears throat> you as a company have and you sell is a product. Now, 
let's just to go back to hairdresser. A hairdresser product sells a service, it's still a product. Think of it as a product. And think about everything that covers that product. That product might be something that you actually manufacture, you make. So it's not just about how you make it, it's about literally uh, how you uh, package it, how it's going to be delivered, the problems with delivering it, is it heavy? Is it, how do you pack, how do you actually load it? How many things do you have, have to actually put together to make it worthwhile to deliver them? These are all things that you should think about within the product when you're doing your research. And then there's of course, pricing. Pricing is vitally important. And so is the research into pricing. Pricing can make the difference. There's a great story about pie makers. There's two, two ladies in a village that actually both make pies. One of them, she tries to make as many as she possibly can, selling them as cheaply as she can. She doesn't succeed very well. Whereas her sister makes the same pie, but sells it for a lot more. She's got the pricing correct. Get your pricing correct and you will do well. There's always a tendency to underprice ourselves, to actually say, look, the way to cut into a market, the way to break into a market is to make the cheapest. Doesn't work. It's been proved so many times. There's some great stories where companies have gone into uh, look at the liquidation of a company and they turn around and said, you know, the problem is not the product. The product is really the best on the market. Um, your manufacturing process is really cheap. Everything is correct. Your marketing's great. It's your price. Your price is too cheap. And there actually have been cases where they've put the prices up and things have sold better. Also remember something else with pricing. It's always easier to come down in price than it is to go up. In other words, make sure that you really think that price through because uh, it's going to be so much harder to try and put the price back up afterwards. Place. Really, really important. And you might think, well, I don't understand what place is about. Well, think about where your place is within the UK. For example, um, I live in Devon and certain businesses work really well in Devon and others don't. Uh, some businesses might rely on an awful lot of footfall and in a small village there isn't. But then there may be other businesses that work within small villages. Place is everything about where your business is going to be. You may well be uh, internet based. Well, that's place still. That suddenly changes everything. My, you know, my place is buyers are everywhere. Are they? But are they? Are they right across the UK? What about certain postcodes that are more expensive to deliver to than others? All of this has got to be thought through. This again is part of your research within this marketing plan. So product, pricing, place. And then finally, promotion. Now that's the last one. That's the one that you get to after all looking into all these other uh, areas. So you've done your research into projects, your pricing, your place. Promotion is suddenly how you're going to advertise, promote your services. And as I say, we'll cover that uh, in the next lecture, but realize that that is the end game. That's where you want to get to. You want to cover everything else so I understand how to best promote my product. Stages of research that you should go through. Number one, define the problem. <clears throat> now we say that, we use the word problem, um, and a lot of people understand, it's like, well, why do we say problem? It's like, uh, I have a company, why do I have a problem? No, you always have a problem. Your problem is to actually be viable. It's as simple as that. A, a company must be viable. So that is your problem. My problem is, I must be viable. What do I need to be viable? How much do I need to come in? How am I going to actually sell my product? All of these things, what is the problem? So you get a good idea of exactly what it is you do. Then plan the research. What research is needed? What do I need to do in order to actually be able to answer a lot of these questions? Do I need research about my product? Are the people that sell that product? In other words, my competitors, my clients, potential, all of these things. All of this goes together in a plan. And there's loads and loads of advice on this on the internet. So please go and have a good look. You are bound to find some really good advice on it. And then carry out the research. Literally carry out the research into all those areas. So the first thing is the plan. And then from that plan, carry out the research. Who are my competitors? And then everything I can find out about them. What have they put? What is their pricing structure? What are they doing for advertising? All these sorts of things. Then it's inter in, interpret the data. In other words, when all that research comes back, what does it actually mean? What can I do? How can I use that research moving forward? That's that interpreting the data area. And then it's implement the findings. And that's as simple as that. Marketing research <clears throat> always is about, first define the problem. 
plan the research you're going to undertake, do that research, interpret that data, the results from that research, and then interpret the findings is simply make a plan and follow it through. What am I going to do now? Oh, must talk about public relations. That one always comes in as something that people don't quite understand. There is links in with marketing, but it's just to one side, but I thought I'd cover it quickly today. Public relations is the use of media tools to promote a positive view of a company or product in the public's eye. Yeah. Okay, so public relations may well monitor what's going on on TV, on social media, etc. It can view, it can involve uh, interviews, speeches, presentations. Yes, you know. But the real, real thing that's important is it's free advertising. Public relations is really something that's important. How people see and perceive your perceive your company, however small that company, is really important. Covered this a lot in branding in my previous lecture, but it's still vitally important to think of it here. But with PR, what I want to, why I popped it in here is it is free. You could be doing some charitable work for local charities, etc. You could be um, giving away free vouchers or something like that to actually promote uh, your company. All of this will generate free publicity, which is a very good thing to do. PLC, the product life cycle, another set of terms, but actually really interesting to get into. The product life cycle is a tool used by market managers to gauge uh, it based on a few assumptions, simple as that. A given product would in, possess in, through its introduction, it then grows, it matures, it declines. What it's really on about is that no product coming to the marketplace is ever going to perpetually last. A simple one, somebody might turn around and say, well, you said food earlier. We always need food. No, but the packaging changes, the way it's laid out. You know, For example, for me, my generation, I would never have believed that people would have paid money for water. And yet, look at it now. It's one of the biggest market leaders out there. So the amount of money, that is, the revenue that's created through selling water is quite phenomenal. But everything has a life, and that's what we want to talk about when we say this life cycle. These are simple terms that are used uh, quite often. I mean, they're American terms originally, but I, I kind of like them because I think they really get across. Everything starts off quite often. A good product will start with a rising star. It's really in demand. It's, it's, it's flying off the shelves. It's just quite amazing. You know, this is really great. Then it goes into a cash cow. It becomes a product that is like it's easy to produce. Um, you've got it down. You've got your costs down to a minimum, and it doesn't. You know, it's just always selling well. So you just have it in the shop, and it is always going to sell. It just goes on and on and on. And then it starts to become less popular. It starts to become even slightly old fashioned. Then it starts becoming something we call a dog. And then there's also another one, an interesting one, a dog with fleas. What's a dog with fleas? Well, a good example would be, uh, say, for example, a shop that had spent an advertiser, invested an awful lot of money in buying a particular brand of shoes that they then found nobody wanted to buy anymore. Not only is it now not a cash cow, it's now a dog. It then becomes a dog with fleas because it's like, how do we get rid of this? I'm stuck with it. It's taking up space. It's actually costing me money to store this. That's a cash cow that's gone into a dog and then it's become a dog with fleas. And not everyone is brilliant at uh, foreseeing what's going to happen with the market. This on one side here on the left is the Newton iPad. Um, it's amazing, really. It does a lot of the things that a mobile phone does for us today. But when it came out, it bombed. The market wasn't ready for it. Yeah, I didn't really understand the need of it. And it wasn't just the only company, Apple. There was a load of other companies that were trying to bring the same sort of thing at the same time. Only a few years later, all of a sudden, mobile phone industry taking off. And Apple, with their first iPhone, really got amazing rising star out of it. And that's what we're talking about. Apple, for example, the very latest phone is offering that rising star. Everyone wants it. Everyone's willing to pay far more money for it than it's actually really worth. And that's great because the company is, re, is getting back a lot of the money it's invested in the actual prototyping and all that sort of work. Then every phone, you will notice this, suddenly starts becoming cheaper as the new one comes out. A lot of people like myself will always buy a phone that's about three or four years out of date because it's suddenly a lot, lot cheaper. Eventually, the phone becomes that dog and they can't get rid of it for love or money. And it just ends up sitting on the shelves. And everyone is trying to stop it become that dog with fleas. They're trying to get rid of these items. And that's why you, the consumer, are always hit with all of these offers all the time. So in the next uh, chat, we'll be talking about advertising, as I say. 
And that's all about the marketing tool deployed in order to meet the objectives of the marketing plan. So basically, all of today has been telling you about some of the basics of what a marketing uh, plan is. Now, in the next talk, we'll be talking to you about advertising. How do you actually advertise, use, uh, or how do you create the tools that will actually help you implement the marketing plan? This, for example, is one of my favorite adverts from years ago. Simple advert um, made a massive difference. It was the launch of the Beetle in America. It's unbelievable to think about it, how well this advert worked. Even to very modern adverts. This is one of my favorite ones just recently, if you remember the program. Very, very clever. Simple as that. Clever advertising. But a lot of marketing research is behind this, and that's the point I'm trying to raise. So today, we've covered what is marketing. We've told you about that research. We've told you some of the terms and the technology you needed. And we hopefully will lead you to a plan that leads to the actions that you then can review and implement with advertising next time. Thank you very much.